Hey guys, today we are going to transfer our butterfly chrysalides over to their habitat so they can hatch, hatch, come out, they can reveal themselves in the habitat. So to get started, I'm just going to reread some of these instructions that we got with our kit, our Painted Lady Butterfly Kit. That way we will know exactly what we're doing. Okay, so changing from caterpillar to chrysalides, chrysalis. Starting in the middle, this says they will hang upside down from the disc and make a J shape. And we saw that. Once they are in the J shape, their bodies will change into a chrysalis and they will shed a very thin layer of outer skin that you may not even see. During the first day while their chrysalis is forming, it is very important that they are not disturbed and you must be very careful not to move or jiggle the cup. This is the most vulnerable stage in the development of a butterfly. Okay, caring for the chrysalides. 24 hours after all the caterpillars have formed chrysalides is the best time to move them into the habitat. So we've had these um, caterpillars a week, a week and a day, and the first one turned into a chrysalide or chrysalis maybe like two days ago, but today is the first day that all of them have been chrysalides for since yesterday. So it's been 24 hours that they've all been chrysalides. Um, so this is what we're gonna do. By this time, they should all be firmly attached to the disc under the lid of the cup. To move them to the habitat, you are going to move the whole disc, not the individual chrysalides. First, set up your habitat. <laughs> then gently open the cup and remove the disc, being very careful not to disturb the chrysalides. Carefully remove any webbing that may be stuck to the chrysalides. If you have our supply bag, there is a little hook. Ta-da! Let's see, there's a little hook included that you can use to hang the disc securely on an inside wall, not the top of the habitat. Otherwise, you can use a safety pin or tape. The chrysalides will be hanging downward and laying against the disc. If any of your chrysalides become detached from the disc, gently lay them on a napkin on the floor of the habitat next to a side wall. The chances are good that they will still emerge as a healthy butterfly. Once every day, use a mister <laughs> to give them a gentle mist of room temperature water. They will do better if misted, but are okay without it. Too much misting is worse than no misting at all. As with the cup, the habitat should be kept at room temperature and out of direct sunlight. Okay, so Elizabeth, will you go get a napkin for us to lay some of the chrysalides on or a paper towel yep paper towel is just fine and then becca will you very carefully get the cup of chrysalides very carefully now earlier today this morning becca walked over to the little cup and one of the chrysalides started shaking and just like back and forth like hitting the cup shaking shaking so uh, we looked in here, thank you. Hello. It's okay, just come over, just come over. <laughs> Nervous. All right, so let's show the video. We have seven chrysalides. I know, They're, they should be okay. One of them did fall down and one of them became a chrysalide on the floor. I thought it was dead, but it still turned into a chrysalide or a chrysalis, I don't know. Okay, will you show me where that part was that said why it's shaking? Oh, it's on the back. There it is, okay. Why are the chrysalides shaking? So this is what happened this morning and it was kind of crazy. Uh, this is a natural instinct to ward off predators. Some may shake and some may not. So when Becca walked over there this morning, one of them started shaking like really hard and fast. 
and it must have thought that Becca was a predator <laughs> and it was trying to keep her away. So, ooh, bless you. Okay, so we're going very carefully. Let's see if we can take this lid off. I don't know how to do this. Very carefully. Okay. Very carefully. Just the lid. Just, Just the lid. lid. Although this cloth, I think, is what they're hanging on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we got the lid off. And let's, we're going to have to hook it with this. And I'm going to lay this on the bottom here because there are two that are on the floor of the cup so we're going to very carefully lay those on the napkin next to the side wall okay so let's pin this onto here oops did i get it So we are hooking the hook onto the cloth. Oh, yep, and they're gonna hang down. Remember, they're gonna hang down and touch the cloth. We're gonna remove any of this webbing that we can. Ew. It's like little silk, little silk strings. Okay, all right. carefully hook this oh wait do I have it hooked on the wrong side yeah. I have to turn it around okay so turn it around hook it that way and hang it on this side careful Becca Ew. okay so yeah don't <laughs> How are we gonna get those out? <laughs> um, I don't know how to get the the two out of the bottom. Do I just reach in? Wait, one more. Okay, so Still. let me get this a little Still. more. Does it say? If the chrysalis falls off the disc, what should I do? Gently lay it on the bottom of the habitat on a napkin near a wall of the habitat. Okay. So I guess you just pick them up. Oh, do you want to touch them? <laughs> Are they hard or squishy? It's, I think they're hard. I'm, I've never touched one. So. Touch one. All right, I'm gonna see if I can. There it is. <laughs> it's a little squishy on the bottom, I think. Okay, so I'm just gonna reach in and grab it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then I'm gonna wash my hands after this. Maybe I'll just dump, should I just dump it? No, I might, oh, I think I can dump. Okay, here comes one. And there's two. Come on, you can do it. It's got a web on it. It is like a web, isn't it? Let's see if we can get that. Got a little silk strings. Oh my goodness, okay. Come off. Here we go. Ah, I don't wanna hurt it. Oh my gosh, I dropped it. I hope I didn't kill it. So there's that. I'm gonna have to go wash my hands. Very carefully. I'm gonna scoot it to the edge, like it said. Trying very softly. And this one I'm gonna put over on this side. Okay, they are close to the edge and we have our chrysalide disc safely hanging in the habitat. Whew. So now, Becca Jo, would you do the honors of mist, giving them their first mist? 
All right, very carefully, just like a gentle one squirt, just okay. right, right down in there. Yep. Not, I wouldn't do it like directly on them. I would kind of do it up above and then let it like fall down. Yep. Okay. I think that's good. Yep. All right. And then we're going to close this up and let's see, Becca, will you read what happens next? Starting right there. Approximately seven. Nice and loud. Approximately seven to ten days after they have made their chrysalis, the butterflies will emerge. Although from the outside, the seven to ten days of the chrysalis phase seems to be when nothing is happening and is really a time of rapid change. Mm -hmm. Within the chrysalis, the old body parts of the caterpillar are undergoing a remarkable transformation called metamorphosis. Let's let's sound it out. Metamorphosis. 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 Keep going. Finish this paragraph. To become the beautiful parts that make up the butterfly that will emerge. All right. Thank you. The chrysalides will get darker as the time to emerge gets closer. Keep your eyes on them now as you may get to witness the birth of a butterfly. So, all right, this goes on, but I'm going to save that for when they start to open up and we will come back here and take another video uh, when, when everything starts moving. And hopefully, hopefully those little guys on the bottom didn't die, but we will see. All right, I think that's it for today. We will tune in again soon and we'll see you then. Bye. All right, we woke up this morning to find that we have a butterfly. Actually, we have two butterflies. You can see the, oh, it's so hard to. Yeah, there is two empty cocoons there. Oh, he's moving. He's gonna start flapping his wings. There's one butterfly there. Let me turn this around. There is the other one right there. So we're gonna wait, wait for the other ones to come out. And then we're going to read our instructions again to see what we have to do. There it's going. Okay. All right. We are here with our butterflies. Currently, we have two butterflies. Um, it looks like one, maybe two, will come out either, well, probably tomorrow is my guess because they're getting nice and dark. So I think that they'll come out tomorrow. So these guys have been out all day since this morning. Uh, we just got back from the beach <laughs> and I figured it would be a good time to read our instructions and see what the next thing to do is. <laughs> do you wanna read for us? <laughs> okay, so it says the chrysalides will get darker as the time to emerge gets closer. So we saw that happen with these two. They got real dark and then like this, the next morning they were out of their chrysalis. So um, that's why we're expecting, uh huh. that's why we're expecting those two to come out tomorrow because they're all nice and dark. Uh, keep your eyes on them now as you may get to witness the birth of a butterfly. As the butterfly emerges, it will hold onto the disc in a vertical position. We saw that like hanging on the wall. Um, let's see, while stretching its wings to full size. Don't be alarmed if you see red liquid, which may look like blood coming from the tail of the butterfly. This is called meconium. It's a waste product left over from the butterfly's metamorphosis. When a butterfly emerges, its wings are soft and folded and it cannot fly. Over a period of one to two hours, the butterfly stretches in and strengthens its wings by forcing blood into its veins. During this time, be careful not to touch or jiggle the habitat and do not try to touch the newly emerged butterflies. We haven't tried to touch them at all, <laughs> but we did very carefully move this 
from up there to right here. Okay. Only one to two hours after emerging, the wings will be full sized and completely hardened. Your butterfly is now fully grown and ready for flight. You can then reach into the habitat and remove the disc and the chrysalis remains. So we have not reached in there uh, because obviously there are one, two, three, four, five. There's five more chrysalides in there that need to, um, the butterflies need to emerge from them. However, we are going to feed them. So this next section says feeding, observing, and releasing the butterflies. <laughs> Do you want to read it, Paul? No. You can read. No. Butterflies will not eat the first day, but after that you need to feed them. See instructions below. So that's where we are at right now. Okay. This is cool because it says butterflies eat by unrolling their, oh, I don't know how to say that. Probosics? Probosics? The little mouth. The little tongue thing. Yep, and well, when they're done. Doing it. Is he doing it? Yeah. When it's done, they roll it back up. But they actually taste with their feet. Their feet taste for them. Butterflies also like to drink from slices of freshly cut watermelon, banana, or orange. Once every day, use a mister. We have, still have that. To give the butterflies a gentle mist of room temperature water. Okay. Here we go. That one's trying to eat. Is it? Well, we're gonna stick some food down in there. Okay. If you have our butterfly feeder, which is this right here, butterfly feeder. Make a sugar solution by mixing a single packet. They gave us some sugar, single packet, in a quarter cup of water, which we have right there. Uh, fill the feeder cup almost to the top and replace the lid. The cotton wick will stay moist and the butterflies will drink the sugar water from the moist wick. Set the feeder on the floor of the habitat. Okay, so why don't we do this? It's flapping its wings. Is it doing its tongue? Yeah, it's like trying to eat. Oh my gosh, okay. Maybe he's hungry. Maybe he's hungry. We should make this. So let's see. Paul, why don't you pour this, okay, do you open that and pour it into there? And then Becca, will you mix that in here after he pours it? And then we're gonna put that water right in here. I can like suck it up and mm, it You could, yeah, but wait till he gets the sugar in. Oh, look at it, oh my gosh, he turned around. He turned around, he's flapping his wings. Okay, so yep, dump that in there. Awesome. Okay, Becca, you stir it carefully because it's really, really full. Don't do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right, so swirl it till it's all dissolved. Now, I was thinking right next to the habitat where we've had this up on the piano, um, I have a big old bottle of hummingbird feeder hummingbird hummingbird food and I was wondering I if, I wonder if this is the same kind of thing just like a sugar water mixture that hummingbirds would eat and so I'm gonna look into it and see if I can use some of that hummingbird food to do this with um, I don't know if I'll need to because we have this and actually I prefer to give them some flowers and some fruit to feast on so okay does that look all dissolved Looks pretty dissolved to me. Then they can suck it up. Well, you can suck up a little bit, but I'm gonna pour it in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see, we'll put it in here. There's our sugar water solution. You wanna put the lid on? Oh wait, hold on, is this sugar down here? It's kind of thick, syrupy. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of this, put it in there, mix it up. Hold on just a second. Okay, no, I'm gonna dump this out, make sure that all that sugar water. Maybe he hasn't unrolled it yet. I don't know. I see some black things. Okay, hold that. And we're gonna put this cotton right here. Alright, now we're gonna have to very carefully lay this down on the bottom. 
Is that sugar water? Mm -hmm. Put it right here. See if we can get that top of that wet. Okay. All right. This Can should be it? soaking it up. Well, it'll just take a minute to get up to the top. Okay, so this cotton ball is gonna soak up that water that's in the bottom of this, and this thing will get all wet here in just a minute. Oh, see, it's already starting. Already starting to get all wet. And then we're gonna put this in here. There's some red stuff on it. Oh, yep, see, that's that meconium that was talking about. <laughs> okay, so Becca, if you hold back this lid, very carefully. I will gently slip my arm down there and I'm gonna set it in between all of those. There's two chrysalides on the floor of this and there's two butterflies that are kind of, they're making a, a diamond. So two butterflies, two chrysalides. I'm gonna set this right in the middle of all of that. All right, let's see. Okay, not touching anything. Okay. All right, we've got our food in there, our butterfly food. Let's see. Yep, you got some sugar on that. Let's see what this says. There was a lot of that, but I dipped it in sugar. <laughs> That's funny. Now it's sugar water. The cotton wick will stay moist and the butterflies will drink the sugar from the moist wick. Set the feeder on the floor of the habitat. Okay. Keep extra sugar water refrigerated between feedings. Rinse and refill the feeder, no soap, once a week. You can make a feeder by putting cotton balls or crumpled paper towels in a shallow dish and keep them moist with a mix of one teaspoon of real sugar and half a cup of water. All right. There's one more little section here. And it says, after observing your butterflies for a few days, we recommend that you release them in their natural environment. This way they can continue their normal life cycle and breed and lay the eggs that will become caterpillars. Your butterflies are not likely to breed within the habitat because they prefer plants for laying their eggs. This is exactly what we want them to do, is to breed and lay their eggs on our flowers out there and then we'll have more butterflies and that'll be really great. Painted ladies live throughout North America so you can safely release them anywhere. Uh, when temperatures are above 55 degrees Fahrenheit, it's safe to release your butterflies. Once released, the butterflies can often be seen for several days in the vicinity of their release. If it's too chilly, you can keep them inside for their full lifespan, but we won't be doing that. Okay, very cool. So we have got ourselves some butterflies now and they have food for when they're ready and the other butterflies will be out soon and in a few days when we are ready to release them I'm going to put that video in the garden vlog for that week. That way I can upload this video today and then we can see the release on the garden vlog. So, are you doing a science experiment? No, just playing with water. Just playing with water. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think? Oh my gosh. All right, <laughs> that's good enough. All right, guys, thank you for watching our, our butterfly growing experiment. And we will see you again on the next one.